We're live in the WAMDA studio at ArabNet with Mike Butcher, the European editor of TechCrunch. Mike, how are you? Great, thank you. Excellent. Are you enjoying ArabNet? I am, yes, it's really good fun. It's, uh, it's a great atmosphere. There's a lot of uh, other people here to talk to about startups and technology, of course, but um, generally I think it's, you know, the great thing about ArabNet is it actually feels like any other technology conference could be anywhere, really. And they, in, a, in a funny sort of way, that that's, that's a good thing, right? You know, it's the same atmosphere, same upbeat vibe, same, same vibe of, of people doing new things, and new and interesting things. Cool, and which new and interesting things are exciting you the most? Well, I mean, there's various companies here. Um, there's startup pitches um, today, and I've been wandering around talking to people as well. I got demoed an interesting app that's uh, about, uh, that's going to come out in a couple of months about creating, the, the, the it's about peace you know, sort of spreading the concept of peace, which is interesting as an app. Um, also, I mean, there's a, start, a very interesting startup here called Cordoba, which is in the translation space. So I think that's quite an interesting spot. I mean, it's quite, quite hard to scale translation. So it'll be interesting to see how they come up with, you know, solve that problem. And um, generally speaking, you know, just a lot of great companies to talk to. Yeah, we invested in Cordoba recently. They have a crowdsourced platform and they're launching it. They just launched a books and e-reading. E um, well, there you go. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Um, when you look at the startups here on average as you're walking around, how do they compare to the startups that you would see, you know, in Palo Alto uh, working on their concepts? Well, I think that there's, there's obviously a difference in the sense that when you're talking about uh, quite highly developed markets like Western Europe or, or the US, what you've got is a lot of the gaps have been filled over the years in, say, e-commerce or you know retail or, or whatever. Um, whereas here in the sort of MENA region, there, there are, I mean, really, it's any, it's up, it's anybody's game here. You know, it's fresh virgin land, as it were, and it's, it, it's a place where people can really start to do things which maybe you know have kind of already been done a lot of, in other places. So you know, a lot of e-commerce is really kicking off here big time um, in various niches and verticals and across the board. Um, gaming of course is really taking off, uh, social of course has been a big deal here, um, but it just seems like it's um, really kind of an exciting time for the, for the whole Middle East, North Africa region because uh, there's just a lot of space to fill really. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and when you assess a startup, you know, do you mind if they're doing something completely innovative if, or if they're just importing something from another region and deploying it here? Does that matter for you in terms of assessing their value or potential? Well, in a way, as a journalist, it's not really up to me to assess a company's value, although obviously there is always usually a tech crunch take on things. Um, it's up to the readers, and, you know, to, to make their own mind up. But um, I think obviously it's much more satisfying to write and report on companies which are doing something uniquely original. Um, but that's not always the case. And actually, interestingly enough, we had the discussion on stage about how, in fact, you can't just transplant um, you know, a business model here to this part of the world and expect it to work. You know, it's 95% execution. And the way you do that is actually going to be quite potentially quite original in its own right, number one, okay? The other thing is I think that more importantly, we get bogged down in this uh, kind of a slightly uh, boring conversation about clones and copycats and, and things like that, especially in, uh, in the US. And, and I think the simple answer to that is how, what sort of ecosystem you, is being built? If the answer is that the founders are able to participate in the value of companies and there's an, maybe a potential exit down the line, uh, which actually benefits the whole staff, then actually what you end up with is a groundswell of new people coming into the system. People can become angel, angel investors in their own right who can then reinvest back into the ecosystem. Whether you do that via a clone or a totally innovative company doesn't really matter. The main thing is that the ecosystem gets built and therefore a rising tide lifts all boats effectively. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, and, it, and obviously there are going to be some fantastic uh, executions of, of existing business models uh, here in this region, um, which really, frankly, couldn't have been done by you know someone just you know coming in, in a helicopter and landing and you know c c importing it wholesale.
I absolutely agree. It's mm. not as though anyone can just come build a clone. No, no. Because it's a clone, it's not simple. Oh, no. Uh, and uh, there are many, many companies which are out there are going to be doing similar business models to ones that already exist, but they didn't exist here, and that's the main thing. Right. Mm. So now I also have to ask you, you know, you've been working at TechCrunch since 2006, and recently there's been a lot of transformation at TechCrunch um, with Michael Arrington's departure, a lot of people have left. Where do you see TechCrunch headed? Well, I think, um, yeah, I think it was really sad to see uh, Michael leave, and I'd worked with him for a while, and uh, and some and some and many many other people's uh, have departed since. Uh, I mean, that's a great shame, but but um, I think I guess you know we're all grown ups, and uh, the media business is the media business, and people leave jobs and uh, you know start companies, but leave them, and and you know go on to other things. And the great thing is that many of those people have gone on to do cool things in their own right. With TechCrunch, I think TechCrunch is a fantastic, you know, what Michael Arrington created was a fantastic platform to talk about startups and to and to expose entrepreneurs and to sh show the world what they're up to uh, and what innovation is about in the technology world. And that's a great platform. And uh, I mean, you know, it's we've got a, ho a great horse and we can run with it and continue to run with it. And I think that uh, certainly there's some, some great new people on board at TechCrunch now. And uh, I think, you know, it's all guns blazing from here on. Cool. And uh, just speaking on behalf of startups, aside from getting published on Wanda, what would you advise a startup who's looking to actually get publicity among Silicon Valley online publications? Yeah, yeah, we, we get uh, we get asked this question a lot, and I and I think that um, having the credibility of being um, you know picked over by in, initially by uh, other blogs, say Wanda or other news outlets as a startup is great you know you need to, people to kick the tires on something and and write a, a real story about what you're doing um, and I think that uh, one of the problems especially for companies outside Silicon Valley is getting exposure on you know TechCrunch, Giga on you know Mashable and you know guys like those and uh, and uh, it's always tough to to get that exposure I just advise startups to channel you know, the best advertising you can have is a really, really amazing product. Uh, have a fantastic product, have a fantastic company, um, get tons and tons of users, and you know what, you know, we'll come to you, number one. Uh, but also, yeah, getting credibility amongst your own press in, uh, in say, in the MENA region, for instance, or getting, if you're a startup in Germany, you know, get rid of up in the German press as well. And then you've got something to show uh, these uh, kind of Silicon Valley blogs that, guys, you know, People are taking an interest in this, you know, and uh, and so so don't, you know. Sometimes it's hard to expect coverage right off the bat from these, you know, big Silicon Valley bulbs. But you know, we're always on the end of an email address, and it, we get, we get a lot of email. Right. And just finally, what gets you excited about writing about startups? Well, I mean, I, I think it's a little bit intoxicating, really. I'm not sure about how you think about it, but it's kind of fun being around entrepreneurs. They are quite interesting people. I mean, often I'm not sure I would necessarily want to be married to one, but uh, they're slightly crazy. And uh, But it's a great fun, and uh, they really want to, you know, in, in their kind of old phrase, they do want to change the world. And, um, and that creates, you know, exciting and interesting conversations, especially as a journalist, you know, you get to cover new, interesting things, you know, and uh, there's nothing more boring than covering a a, 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 an industry, you know, a tired industry that's on its last legs, and it's and at the opposite end of the spectrum. It's fantastic to be covering effectively what is going on is a you know a third industrial revolution. Uh, you know, people were creating steam engines and trains back in the day, and now they're creating apps and platforms, and uh, and that's uh, totally changing the world. And there's always something new to to write about. So you know, it doesn't really get uh, boring. I agree. It's writing on the edge of what's new. Exactly. Well, thanks for chatting with us at Wanda. Been my pleasure. Great thanks very much. Have, great to have you here.